Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3, starting at verse 1. 1 John chapter 3. Verse, starting at verse 1, I'll be reading from the Amplified Bible. It's that our custom here at New Season Christian Center to stand as we read the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. First John chapter 3, starting at verse 1 from the Amplified, it says, See what an incredible quality of love the Father has given, shown, bestowed on us that we should be permitted to be named and called and counted the children of God. And so we are. The reason that the world does not, recognize, does not know, recognize, acknowledge us is that it does not know, recognize, and acknowledge him. Verse 2, beloved, we are even here and now God's children. It is not yet disclosed, made clear what we shall be hereafter, but we know that when he comes and is manifested, we, sh we shall be as God's children, resemble and be like him, for we shall see him just as he really is. I like the part here in the text. It says, and we're counted the children of God, and so we are. Praise God. Father, we thank you for this time in your word. We ask now, O oh God, that the word of God be preached with clarity, with power, Lord God that it will be a transforming word. Father, hide me behind your cross. God, you be exalted, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We bless you and thank you. It's in Jesus' name and all God's people say amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to talk to you from our third installment from our current series, Free Indeed. I want to talk to you about identity theft. Identity theft. Identity theft. They say that a child's esteem is, a person's esteem is built by the time they are seven years old. Um, that, that type of child with good self-esteem, they can go to the playground and play by themselves and be just fine. Or as my son does, he can go down and play with his cars and don't have to have a friend and talk to himself. Praise God and have a good old time. Praise God. But, but, uh, when that self-esteem is not developed, we depend on others to be the ones that kind of valid, to, to validate us and to tell us who we are. And I believe that's one of the biggest tricks of the enemy, one of the biggest weapons the enemy throw at us is the weapon of not knowing who we are or having an identity crisis. Amen? Um, we would do things that, that, that are totally out of our character because we're trying to find who we are. Amen. And so then you, we'll do something and somebody look back and say, well, I don't, man, I, I don't believe they did that. But they did it because they're still trying to find out who they are. One of the worst things for a man is not to know who he is. And then he will go here and there and everywhere trying to find out who he is. And if somebody said he did something well, then he'll say, that's who I am. And that's, that's not how you find your identity. But in our world today, there's a, a, going, a thing that's been going on for, for, for a long time, but now it's all brought out in the open. It's called identity theft. And so I'm going to give you a little bit of a PSA before we get started here in the Word, all right? Identity theft is a crime where a thief steals your personal information, such as your full name or your social security number, to commit fraud. The identity, theft can use, the identity thief can use your information to fraudulently apply for credit, file taxes, or get medical services. I, I had one time I ran my credit report, I think I was going to buy something, and they told me I owned a house in Texas. I said, a house in Texas? And they said, yeah, and I said, well, how much is the house worth? And they, <laughs> and they said 180,000. I said, well, wow, I said, well, are they paying the bill on time, on the note on time? They said, every single one's been paid on time. I said, well, that just helped me out. <laughs> but it, it, it caused me to have some concern because it was about to hinder me being able to do what I needed to do for myself. Because they said that your debt to credit ratio was a little out of whack because you own this home. I said, but I live here in Alaska. I have never been 
in Texas. And I said, well, what bank approved it? They said, Chase Bank. I said, I don't even have an account with Chase Bank. And, and so then I disputed it and it disappeared. But the fact is, the truth of the matter is, most people don't do that type of research. Most of us don't know until it's too late. They said that even identity theft even happens to children. Now, I'm not going to look at y'all when I say this, but some of y'all put a cable bill in your child's name. But I ain't going to look at you. Your light's on because of your child's name. And, and, and some, of, some of us got credit cards with our children's names on them. And, but I'm not going to look at you while I say that. That's called identity theft. And you're, ruin, you're ruining your child's credit. And then they're going to try to go apply for a student loan or they're going to try to go do something in life and they're going to find out that you didn't pay the bill that you put in their name. But I'm going to move on because some of y'all looking at me like y'all want to fight. I'm going to move on. <laughs> we know that these, ooh, Jesus. these acts can damage your credit status and cost you time, money to restore your good name. You may not, you may not know you are a victim. Most of us don't know we're victims. But listen, there's some steps to, now this is a PSA now, so this is not the preaching, but this is, this is the steps you can take. It says secure your security number, a social security number. Don't, don't carry your social security card in your wallet. Only give out your uh, social security number when absolutely necessary. Now, if you're military, <laughs> we gave out our social security number like it was water because that was, the main, that was our main identifier. Well, you can't do that out here in the real world. Uh, don't share personal information like your birth date, your social security number, or bank account numbers just because someone asked for it. If you ever get one of those phone calls and they say, hey, we're trying to verify an account, and, and you say, no, we're not going to do that over the phone. Uh, collect your mail every day. And if you're going to be out of town, uh, put a hole on your mail until you get back. Y'all didn't think all that mattered, did you? Pay attention to your billing cycles. If bills or financial statements are late, contact the sender. Use the, social, use the security features on your mobile phone. You need to have security features on your phone. They have, they have devices now they can walk up to you next to you now and hit and get up against you and take everything out of your phone. Amen. This is going to all make sense in a minute, all right? He says, they say shred receipts, credit offers, uh, uh, account statements, and uh, expired credit cards to prevent dumpster divers from getting your personal information. Uh, store personal information in a safe place. Buy a safe. I have a safe at my house. Put all your personal stuff in there. Um, install firewalls and virus detection software on your home computer. There's so many different ways. You need, you need to check your credit report once a year. Amen. You, you need to do all these things. I, I, got, I got a few real estate agents here that had deals fall through because you didn't check your credit, your credit report. Praise God. So we must know, we got to know this, we got to know, if it requires that much attention to protect your identity in the world, how much more does it require for you to protect your identity in Christ? Amen. Amen. And so, so we, we know that, that if we're going to protect our identity in Christ, our identity in Christ is supernatural. Which means then that there's a, there's a demonic force that will fight you to destroy your credibility, to destroy your name, to destroy who you are in Christ. There's an enemy fighting you. The Bible tells us that we have an adversary who go about to and fro seeking whom he may devour. We have an adversary and, and we understand that according to 1 Peter 5 and 8. It's not God's adversary. He's our adversary. Always remember this. The devil is your adversary, not God's adversary. God doesn't have an adversary because in order to be an adversary, you must be an equal. You must have the ability to bring one down if you're going to be an adversary. Amen? And if you created it, it can't be your adversary. You have domination over it. You got to understand that the devil is a dumpster diver. He's a Trojan horse virus. He wants to interrupt you operating in the kingdom system. He wants you to think that you're just like everybody else. He wants you to think that you're just like where everybody where you came from. He wants you to think you're just like Uncle Ray Ray and all those who haven't done well. You know, because people under your, in your name, uh, in your family have done, not done well, they think that everybody in your family shouldn't do well. But I think I'm among people who are curse breakers. Amen. 
We understand that the thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you may have what? Life. And you may have that life what? More abundantly. That means that if the devil shows up, he's showing up to take you out. He, don't, he doesn't play games. He plays for keeps. He comes in. If you entertain the devil, I want you to understand right now, you're going to end up losing. Amen? Amen? So, so, so one of the things uh, he wants to do is to destroy the truth of your identity in Christ. He wants to bring up your past. He wants to bring up all your bad habits you used to have. He wants to bring up all the things that you failed at, and then he wants you to look at the mirror of that what you've done and make yourself that again. But you've been set free from that. You've been set free by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You, you are free. Tell your neighbor you're free. He wants you to make you seem like it's not worth it to stick with God. He, he wants you to make it seem like you've been fighting to live for the Lord and, and it seemed like nothing's changing. And, and, and the reality is, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Being a new creature is not a feeling. Being a new creature is not when you go home and your house has changed. Being a new creature is something that supernaturally happened from the inside. It's happening on the inside, and while that's happening on the inside, God says, I'm going to work it and make it come out to the outside, but it's not instantaneous. This is why he says we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Don't be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may know. Here it is, that you may know. Remember last week we talked about I know, I know, that you may know that good and perfect will of God. And when you know the good and perfect will of God, you know what God's intentions are about you. Yes. And so when bad things happen, you understand that all things work together for the good to them that are called according to his purpose and love him. And we also know that we're being conformed to his image. Yes. We also understand that his plans towards us are good and they are not evil. He wants us to come to an expected end. And so I come to tell you right now, you need to know the truth because the truth makes you So no matter what weapon the devil throws at you, because he's constantly, we're in constant warfare. We're, he's constantly throwing, uh, uh, launching attacks against us. Uh, he's throwing imaginations at us. He's throwing arguments at us. He's throwing bad, bad thought patterns at us. But we must know we have the supernatural power to pull down every argument, every bad thought pattern, and every bad imagination, because it's fighting against our knowledge of God. I want to tell you that the devil doesn't play, for, he doesn't fight fair, and he's never going to fight fair. So he's going to all, you're going to always be under attack because you are a threat to his kingdom when you know who you are. That means you won't back down. You won't shut down. You won't settle for anything because you know who you are in Christ. I know what God has for me. I know what he wants me to have. And I know he doesn't want me to have sickness and disease. I know he doesn't want me to be walking around in depression. I know he doesn't want me to be walking around in poverty. So when those things show up, they are a direct lie. They are a direct attack, attack against the truth of God in about you. Amen. But sometimes we sit back and we'll say stuff like, I guess that's just the way it is. Mama went through it. Daddy went through it. Grandma went through it. Oh, yeah, I remember my cousin. They went through this, too. It's just one of those things. That's what we go through because we, we Leonard, so we Jenkins or whatever we are. But the devil is a liar. You've been born again. You have a new life in Christ. Your blood, your DNA has shifted. You have a supernatural DNA. You have a supernatural destiny that God has set for your life. And so we know, we know that our identity is constantly under attack. And the thing is, we cannot settle for what the devil throws at us concerning, and what he says about us. Amen? One of the great challenges in life is to live according to the truth, about, according to the truth of what God says about you. Because sometimes your outside circumstances don't match. You ever tried to play the matching game? You try to, you're flipping the card and you're constantly trying to get that match? That's what we're doing as we walk out this life in Christ. We're trying to get what God said about us to manifest on the outside of us. And so when you live by faith, that gives you the power to bring manifestation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, uh, faith is not taking chances. 
Faith is locking into what God said and holding on to it and not letting go. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's go to the text here. Now, now, let me tell you, let me tell you. Now, now, when the enemy is throwing these arguments and these bad thought patterns, according to 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, um, he's throwing these things at us and we have the power to pull it down. But we're not just pull, it's not just you pulling something down. It says you're pulling it down into the obedience of Christ. Oh, hell, here we go. Here we go. See, if you know, if you really know who you are, when you pull it down, you walk out the opposite of what it's throwing at you. That, 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 that's your victory. That when the enemy can come in and say, no, it's like this, it's like this. And you say, no, 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 the word of God says it's like this. And I choose to walk out the word of God in spite of the challenges that I'm facing. Don't, don't let the pressure of life squeeze you so tight that you can't be obedient to God. Listen, you don't want a world's outcome. You want a word outcome. I want what God's word promised and what he says about me. I don't want what the world says I should get out of this thing. Amen? Amen. So let's look at the text. Let's look at the text here. The text here back at 1 John chapter 3. Now you think about that in the natural, that if you don't take all the precautions, and, and, and we'll say stuff like this. This is what we'll say. Oh, that wouldn't happen to me. That wouldn't happen to me. That, that happened to other folk. Yeah, that. Well, you know, uh, I can guarantee you right now, a high percentage of us in this room don't know who we are. And we can be 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old. That, that we, we, we really don't have a full understanding of what God's plan is for our life. See, once you understand who you are and what God wants to do with your life, you begin to walk your life out in that pattern. You can't, listen, the, the, the distractions and the detour, this is why he tells us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Why? Because he says, and all those things, see, the thing that's causing us to kind of go left and right is, is our things. There are things. There are things that the world says you should have. There are things that you want. And sometimes we're not patient enough to allow God to work those things out in us. We want to go get them ourselves. And then when we go get them ourselves, we don't like the outcome or the consequence of what we went and got. So then we want to get on our knees and start calling on the name of Jesus. And thank God he will respond to us. Amen. But we can avoid all of that knowing who we are in. Yeah, the devil's trying to, he, he, he doesn't show up but to steal to kill and destroy. Amen. He, he might, he or she might come up, uh-huh, and, and, and this and that might come up. Amen. And you're getting, you're getting off track, and you won't wait for what God has for you. Amen. Y'all quiet today. I must be at a different church this morning. Amen. First John 3, 1 and 2, listen to the text here. It says, see what an incredible quality of love the Father has given and shown and bestowed on us. Now, now here's the question is, do you believe that? Can, can you believe that in spite of some of your life circumstances and situations you may be in? You know, because I've heard people say, well, if God loved us, how did he, why would he allow that to happen? Can I tell you that type of response is an immature, childish response? Amen. Amen. It, that, that's, that's the type of response a pouty brat has. Because everything's supposed to be good for me. And if God loves me, how come bad things are happening? There's a devil. I just answered it very simply for you, that there's a devil also. And guess what? And listen, he was in the earth before you were. He's been wrecking habit before we even were thought of. And, and, let me, and, and let me help you with something. And he ain't gone nowhere. I said it like I'm going to He ain't gone nowhere. Amen. And, and he's your adversary. He doesn't want you to come into the knowledge of who you really are in Christ. Because if he can hold you back from that, he understands that his kingdom can prevail in your life. But once you understand who you are in Christ, you don't take wood nickels. Oh, yeah, you don't take wood nickels. Sometimes the devil will come at me, I say, but you better come a little stronger than that, doc. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, you better come, you better come, yeah, yeah. You, you better go back and re-strategize, doc. Yeah, yeah. I, I talk to the devil like that, I don't know about y'all. 
But when he come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifts up the standard. I tell him, Doc, you better come. You better come with a little something else because I, 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 I'm, I'm an overcomer. I'm more than a conqueror. And so you, 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 you better go back to your drawing board and meet with some of your demons and your imps because I don't play games. Now, you say that might sound cocky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got faith. And I understand God doesn't want me to be destroyed. He doesn't want me to be taken out. So I talk to the devil like this. Listen, listen. I'm kind of like the Hebrew boys. Listen. Like this. We know he's well able to get us out of this. But if he don't, I'm going to still praise him. And so the boys got thrown in the fire. Now, I, I like what Elder Raper said this Wednesday. He said, the guy who went to throw them in the fire got consumed by the fire. He was just checking the fire. Got consumed by the fire. So we know that this, a, this fire is a, a deadly fire. They got thrown in the fire. You got to be willing to be thrown in with no compromise to be thrown in the fire and know that your God is willing. Because of his love for us, he's well able to come in the fire with us and to deliver us. That's what I love about Jesus. Jesus don't look outside the fire and say, come out. He come in there and get us, praise God. I don't know if anybody ever been through anything, but, but God came in some fires and came and got me out. Because his, of his love for me. Praise God. So there's a love that he has. It's, it cast out fear and the torment that come, come with it. And, it cast out all that esteem, uh, self low self-esteem and all that good stuff. And then and he said that we should, you know, we should be permitted to and be named and called and counted the children of God. And so we are. If you're born again, I want you to hear, hear you say, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. He said it's as simple as this in John 1 and 12 and Amplified. He says, but to as many as as did receive and welcome him. He gave the authority, the power, the privilege, the right to become the children of God. That is to those, here we go, who believe in his name. But what does it mean to believe? Y'all know I like to mess with this here. It means to adhere to, trust in, and rely on. Believe is not saying I believe. You telling me I believe is not believing. There's a lot of people I walk up to and they say, I believe in God. Yeah, believing in God is not enough. Y'all do know that, right? Believe, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth and the life. No man come to the Father except by me. You got to believe in that man named Jesus. Amen? Amen. But he says, listen, to believe means to adhere to. What does it mean to adhere to? If I took a piece of tape and I put it to, on this, on this pot, on this, uh, 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 what do you call that thing? Whatever that thing is right there, that right there, that beam, thank you. Amen. I will hear that tape. It's stuck to, it'll be stuck to that, 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 that beam there. Well, 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 to adhere to means that I'm stuck to God's commands. So that means that as I live my life, my life is to fulfill his commands. Uh, it means to, to trust in. I don't lean to my own understanding, but in all my ways I act. Uh -huh. So that means that if I say I believe, it looks like something. Amen. If I say I rely on him, I don't put my trust, I don't, tr I don't rely on any other source to supply for me but him. Amen. I, I was having a conversation last week with a gentleman and, and we were talking about the government and I told him I don't depend on go the government to supply for me. And he looked at me. I said, yeah, I don't depend on the government to supply me. He said, well, you get VA. I said, I earned that. I earned every dime of that VA. Every, I, I got 12 years to prove that I earned every dime of that VA. So that, that's not something, they, they ain't give me nothing. I, I, had to, I had to fix that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't depend on my taxes to do anything for me. I pay taxes. Amen. Amen. And so my dependency is not on the government. So I don't care who's president. I don't care who's governor, I don't care who's the senator, who sits on the assembly, I don't care. Now, I'm involved in the political process, but what I'm saying is whoever win, they win, but my God is king. And he said, 
because I rely on and I adhere to and I trust in that he will supply all of my needs. Somebody say, get unlocked from that government system. Get, get, get you're in the kingdom of God. So if you're in the kingdom of God, it is up to your king to supply for you. I'm a citizen of the kingdom. And if my king does not supply for me, it makes him look bad as a king. And we already know. So, so don't, believing is not what you say out of your mouth. Believing is a hearing to, trusting in, and relying on. Now, now, here's the truth. He's given us authority to be called the children of God. He, he, he has given us power, privilege, and right. And since it's done with such authority, then there is a responsibility to represent my position as a child of God. So what he's saying is that when you said, I believe, there was an authority for you, when you to, to step in to be an heir of God, a joint heir with Christ Jesus. Which means that, listen, I don't haphazardly carry this, 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 this title, this position of being a child of God. Amen? Uh, 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 being a child of God is not being a church member. Being a child of God, amen, it has nothing to do with how you dress. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, 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 but being a child of God has everything to do with what you believe. And what you believe, you will live. It will be, there will be evidence of you believing by the way you live your life. Amen. I'm still trying to figure out if I'm in the right church yet. Yeah, yeah. And so now, we should become a reflection of our Father. If we're the children of God, then there should be a reflection. There should be where if I look at you, I look at your life, it should reflect what you say you believe. Sometimes, sometimes I get mixed signals. Y'all may have got a few yourself, you know, that somebody claimed that they, whoo, I'm in Jesus, I love the Lord, and then, whoo, my God, you know, uh, uh, I, I, that, that didn't look right. Uh, that, 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 that right there don't fit right in, the, you know. Somebody say standard, there's a standard. But, but, but don't get so hooked on the standard, you need to get hooked on surrender. Oh, yeah, let me see if this side responded. You need to get hooked on surrender. See, because what I surrender to, I uphold a standard. We're so hooked on standards. So you try to play the part, but you'll fail at it. But once you surrender to God, you'll uphold a standard. Amen? And so, so, so the reason... This is, reflection is so important is because it has everything to do with the core of who you really are. See, see, some of us still living like we are parents' kids. We still living like, I'm still, sometimes we can live like I'm still Dolores and Thomas' son. In the natural, yes, I am. But now I live according to a different DNA makeup. That if they don't change, I'm changing. Huh? It, 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 they might call you a holy roller. That's what they call me. They, they call me that in my family, the, the holy roller, because we, 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 we don't play religious games. You know, we don't, we don't say stuff like God understand. Yeah. And where I come from, they say, well, God, you know, when they mess up, they say, well, God understand. No, no, no. Don't bring them down that low. Don't bring, no, don't bring them down that low. But there's a way out, praise God. But don't make it seem like he put you in there. Let me move on. The second part of the text. So we understand that we're the children of God, amen? Number two, the reason that the world does not know or recognize, acknowledge us is that it does not know, recognize him. The lack of recognition has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with everybody's recognition of him. 
Because if they don't know him, they can't recognize you because you are a resemblance or a reflection of him. So don't get so mad trying to prove to people who you are. That's just like me walking around here talking about, I'm the pastor of this church. I'm the pastor of this church. If I have to do that, I'm not the pastor of this church. I might have my name on the door, but somebody else is pastoring this church if I have to walk around and tell you, I'm the pastor of this church. By the way I carry myself and live my life and how I walk in the authority that God has given us should prove that we are the pastors of this church. Amen? And if that's not the case, then somebody else is pastoring the church and I need to get a memo and need to know so I can get them the keys. And they can meet with accountants and auditors and, and do all the things that are necessary to make sure that this ministry is upheld in all integrity. Uh, okay, amen. Yeah. But the truth is that a lack of recognition of him, so, so when they don't recognize him, it's, pretty hard, it's really hard for them to recognize you. They, they, they'll, they'll call you stuff like you're a goody two-shoe. They'll say something, oh, you think you're better than everybody. And they'll, they'll confuse your trust in God as arrogance. Because you won't come down to certain levels. They'll call you prideful. And, but the reality is you're living the life of faith. And, and, and you're like Nehemiah saying, I'm doing a good work. And I can't come down. You'll have some ballot and all them trying to say, come on down here. I need to talk to you. No, no, I don't have time to come down there and talk. I got a work I'm doing. Amen. So the reason for identity crisis or conflict is a lack of recognition. Now, here's the other frustrating part. If you don't recognize what God has for you, the thing that you don't understand, you will abuse. If you don't have a clear understanding of who you are in Christ, you will be a self-abuser. You will put yourself in, in positions that will bring harm to you because you don't know the value of or recognize who you are. Amen? So listen, you never want to put the power in someone else's hands to identify you. You never want to live a life where you need somebody outside of you to say, would you please tell me who I am? I want to tell you now, if you have a real viable relationship with the Lord, I, I, in a matter of time, you're going to figure it out. Yes. I remember when I first started preaching, and, and when I first started preaching, um, I would say that J Bishop Jakes was in his prime. It's not like he never lost his prime. He's been in his prime like for 30 years. But, but, but when I first came on the scene, uh, he, was, he was big, man. He was running, you know, doing manpower, woman that I'll lose, and all this stuff, and, 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 and pretty much greatest voice that our country had and, and, and I would watch him and, and, and man, I would go buy suits and, and man you there was a certain you know you had a suit you got to try to you know I used to preach real hard back in the day I used to preach hard and, 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 and boy do revival and we had an organ and me, me and the organ about to faint together I mean and, and, and but I was trying to be something that I wasn't I, I'm just gonna talk about me I can't talk about y'all Oh, I would watch Eddie Long and all these different preachers and Creflo and everybody. You know, back then you had oh, Rod Parsley and Schombach and all those boys, man. You would watch them. And, and, and I was into this trying to discover, well, who am I? Yes, yes. And so, you know, I, it, the only problem is, is that I only can be a, 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 a not, I can't, won't be a good imitation. You only, you're trying to imitate somebody else because you don't know who you are. And, and it's okay to have a mentor. And, and you will probably Im imitate and do some of the things that they do. But in that, you should discover who you are. You should come to a point where you say, you know what? I mean, that's cool. It sounds cool when they do it. But when I, uh, uh, God, what is it that you, how you want me to do it? But I'm a bad original, though. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I, you know, I learned that from Bishop Jakes. Bishop Jakes said, you know, he said he used to do the same thing, imitate all these preachers. He says, but when I found out that I, he said, when I found out I was the baddest Thomas Desta Jakes in the world, I want to tell you right now, you're the baddest Nicole Little in the world. There's, not, there's no other Nicole Little in the world like you. 
And once we can discover who we are, then we can be the best original we can ever be. But if you're always depending on somebody to validate you and tell you who you are, you'll only be what they tell you. So then guess what? Who has the control now? If they tell you you're sorry, guess what? You're gonna, if you believe it, you're sorry. And every time you try to do something, you will fail. And they tell you, oh, you ain't going to be nothing or whatever. Listen, most people try to control you because they have some issues. On, they have their own issues. And, and because they don't know who they are, they're going to try to control everything around them and everybody around them. But I come to tell you today, listen, you need to find out who you are and don't expect. Listen, I don't even depend on my mama to tell me who I am. I don't depend on my daddy to tell me who I am. If they weren't going to tell me, they should have told me a long time ago. But now that I came in Christ, guess what? The only one that has the power, the power to tell me who I am is my God, my Father. When he tell me who I am, I believe it. Amen. Yeah, you don't, don't, don't go around needing folk to validate you. Amen. Now, there's some folk that will come around and help you and encourage you and all that stuff. But look, you take the encouragement, but you need to go seek God for yourself and find out who am I? What do you want me to do? You know, you, you, we're up here trying to get preachers' license and robes and stuff, and God ain't even called us to that stuff. You, listen, I, look, I used to feel better. I said, you, Pastor, you need a robe, and I bought a robe. I don't like wearing robes. <laughs> robe? I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. That's, that's just not where I'm at. When God told me I can wear blue jeans to preach, I said, what? And I started throwing them jeans on and those tennis shoes and stuff. And, and, and people around town was like, man, they, they crazy over there. I remember one time my wife was preaching at a church to go visit. And she had on a dress and the sleeve was out. Well, I was a knucklehead. I came in my blue jeans and a sweat and a, and a sports coat. And I said, well, I'm just going to sit. I knew I, I shouldn't sit in the pulpit, so I'm going to sit and just listen to her preach. And the first question they asked her is, where your robe at? Second question, they said, well, you sitting in the, the second thing they said, did you sit in the pulpit? I said, no, I ain't. They said, yes, you are. I said, but I got on these jeans. They said, you're sitting in the pulpit. And I, and I said to myself, I knew better. Because God gives you originality, doesn't mean that you go and disrespect somebody else's. Sometimes we can, we can find out who we are and we have unmanaged pride. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to tell me what, yeah, yeah, that, that, now listen, I know if I'm going to go, watch this, if I'm going to go over to, to the church and God in Christ, I ain't going in blue jeans. If I'm going over to the holiness church, we, my wife ain't going in pants. You know, because if you know who you are and you can't honor somebody else, you really don't know who you are. You got to be secure in who you are that you don't disrespect somebody else because you're so secure. Amen. Let me tell you the danger of not knowing who you are. Go to Acts chapter 19. I got to get y'all home because I, I got up early and I need to get down like I'm supposed to. All right. Acts 19, 14 through 16. And I'll give you the deal with these sons of Sceva, uh, uh, a Jewish chief priest who did so, and the evil spirit answered and said this, listen, listen he's going to try to cast out this devil, and he's going to say, listen, I, I, I'm going to come at you like this, he said, because um, I don't know who I am, uh, and so since he didn't know who he was, the devil said, I'm going to let you know who you are, I'm going to let you know that you're nobody, he says, look, he says, he says, and the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, he says, but who are you? Because the man came and tried to cast the devil out in the name of Jesus that Paul talked about. But see, let me tell you something now. If you don't know who you are and you don't know who Jesus is. Amen. Now, listen, if you notice, knowing who Jesus was wasn't enough. Oh, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Go and try to cast out a devil and don't know who you are. And don't know what authority you have. Yeah, you got it. See, we want to slang Jesus' name around, but there's more to it. The one that's going to use it got to know who they are. They got to know what authority they have. The authority and power is in that name, but he also gave us authority to be the children of God. You got to know the authority that you have to be his child, but when you use his name, you got to also have that confidence that, listen, I'm in, God, I'm in Christ. 
And listen, the devil pointed out, he says, you ain't in Christ. You don't have the power, the authority to use that name. So guess what happened? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was, was leaped on them. Because of a lack of identity. A lack of identity caused the, the evil spirit to say, okay, I'll get out of him and get on you. Oh, y'all don't want to talk about that. You know, back in the, uh, you know, I come from the Pentecostal Holiness Church, so if somebody manifests a demon, we clear the church out. Get all the children out. Get everybody out. Get, all, get everybody out. You know, some of y'all come from that. Yeah. We, we want to clear the room because we wanted to make sure that everybody in the room knew who they were. Because we knew that that evil spirit can make a move. And if you was in the room and don't know who you, okay. The, Bi the Bible said it right here. He overpowered them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. He will, he will put you to shame if you don't know who you are. Tell your neighbor, we, we got to find out who we got to find out who we got. We got we to do it. We got to do it. This is not, see, this is, this, this is not games. See, the devil played for keeps. I just proved to you, if you don't know who you are, how he's going to respond to you. Thank you. Thank you, sister, because I feel like I'm in somewhere else. Verse 2, and I'm closing. He says, beloved. We are even here and now God's children. It is not yet disclosed, made clear, what we shall be hereafter, but we know that when he comes and is manifested, we shall, as God's children, resemble and be like him, for we shall see him just as he really is. And I know that that is an end-time scripture. I understand that. That's talking about the second coming of Christ and those that are in Christ. We'll see him as he is and we'll also see ourselves and we'll resemble him and all that. But that resemblance shouldn't take place then. That should be happening now. Let me tell you now, when Jesus' second coming comes, it's going to be a little too late to get it together. It's going to be a little too late to try to say, do I look like him? It is what we do now that starts to conform us into the image of his son, Jesus. Romans 8 and 29 says we're being, look, for who he foreknew, uh, he, 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 he's conforming us to the image. He predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son. You're being conformed, somebody say now. now. Yeah, you're not waiting until later. That's some of our excuses. Well, you know, I ain't there yet. That's okay you ain't there yet, but you should be in the process of becoming. That, that, that should be a little resemblance there. You should have something that when, the, when we encounter you, it should be like, yeah, I see Jesus. I, I, I see Jesus. I love this part because it says, it is not yet disclosed, made clear, what we shall be hereafter. So we are on a constant discovery of who we are and what we have and what we can do. There is a constant revealing Every day you should be revealed. There should be some, 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 some nuance of you. This new thing should be being unveiled in you every day in your relationship with Christ. You shouldn't be the same way you were yesterday, today. Amen. And so this, is, this requires intimacy with God. It requires time with God. It don't, look, it don't just require coming to church on Wednesday and Sunday. It requires a lifestyle, a life in Christ, a life of, of, of fellowship with him, one of prayer, one of study, one of, of fasting, one, all those different things that conforms you and molds you into the image of him. But he says, but we know that when he comes, we already know, we know when he comes, we, he's going to, and is manifested, uh, we shall as God's children, it's not say we shall when become God's children, as God's children, resemble and be like him, for we shall see him just as he really is. I want to share a couple of verses with you, and I want you to write these down, just in case you're going through identity crisis, and understand that there's an identity theft being, that's taken place. In Colossians 2 and 10, you're not going to be able to keep up with me on the screen, I am completing him who is the head over all rule and authority over every angelic and earthly power. 
According to Ephesians 2 and 5, I am alive with Christ. According to Romans 8 and 2, I am free from the law of sin and death. According to Isaiah 54 and 14, I am far from oppression and will not live in fear. According to 1 John 5 and 18, I am born of God and the evil one does not touch me. Amen. In Ephesians 1 and 4, I am holy and without blame before him in love. I have the mind of Christ, according to 1 Corinthians 2, 16. I have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, according to Philippians 4 and 7. The Spirit of God, who is greater than the enemy in the world, lives in me, according to 1 John 4 and 4. I have received abundant grace and the gift of righteousness and reign in life through Christ now, according to Romans 5 and 17, I have received the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus, the eyes of my heart enlightened, so that I know the hope of having life in Christ, according to Ephesians 1, 17. I have received the power of the Holy Ghost, and he can do miraculous things through me. I have authority and power over the enemy in this world, according to Mark 16, 17, and 18. I am renewed in the knowledge of God and no longer want to live in my old ways or nature before, uh, before I accepted Christ, uh, according to Colossians 3 and 9 and 10. Now, listen, I've been renewed in my knowledge. Remember last week, I know, I need, I've been renewed in my knowledge, so I no longer want to live in my old nature. Amen. According to 1 Peter 2 and 9, I am chosen by God who called me out of darkness of sin into the light and the life of Christ so I can proclaim the excellence and greatness of who he is. Amen. I am born again, spiritually transformed, renewed and set apart for God's purpose through the living and everlasting word of God. According to 1 Peter 1 and 23, I am God's workmanship created in Christ to do good works that he has prepared for me to do, according to Ephesians 2 and 10. Uh, we know that we are new creations in Christ, according to 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. I am a joint heir with Christ. I am more than a conqueror through him who loves me. I overcome the enemy by my, of my soul by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony, according to Revelation 12 and 11. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I belong to him, according to 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. I am the head, not the tail. I am the head, not the tail. And I only go up and not down in life as I trust and obey God, according to Deuteronomy 20, 28 and 13. I am redeemed, forgiven of all my sins, and made clean through the blood of Jesus. Ephesians 1 17. I am healed and whole in Jesus. I am saved by God's grace, raised up with Christ and seated with him in heavenly places. I am greatly loved by God. I am strengthened with all power according to his glorious might. I'm humbly submit myself to God and the devil flees from me because I resist him in the name of Jesus. I press on each day to fulfill God's plan for my life because I live, I live to please him. I don't live to please me. I live to please him. I am not ruled by fear because the Holy Spirit lives in me and gives me his power, love, and self-control. Christ lives in me and I live by faith in him and his love for me. It's no longer I that live, but the, the Christ that lives in me.